I was hoping to go outside and do some shooting today, but maybe it's better we just go back inside. All right, since the weather is absolutely miserable out there, I definitely do not want to go outside and go and shoot. I thought today we'd spend the afternoon at my studio and I would show you the new control panel in Lightroom, which is called color grading. Now, for those of you guys who are videographers, the color grading control panel tab is gonna look very similar. It's gonna look like a three wheel color corrector. But if you are only a photographer, you're gonna look at it and be like, what in the world is this? But don't worry, it's pretty much just split toning with some extra improvements. With split toning in the past, you could change the, the tint or color of your shadows or highlights, but now with color grading tab, you can actually control shadows, mid-tones, and highlights, and not only just control the color tint, but as well you can change the luminance and as well impact the balance of the different colors that you want to impact. So we're going to jump into Adobe Lightroom and I've downloaded this gradient in order for me to show you how this works. So open up the color grading tab and here at first you're going to see uh, the three way color corrector for color grading. So you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the way this circle works is, is the more on the edge you are, the more saturated it's going to get. Uh, so for example, if I want to put shadows to blue, I'm going to put all the way, that's as blue as it's going to get. If I go mid, uh, mid tones, I'm going to put all green and then I'm going to put the highlights to red. So because the color corrector is on the outside, that means it is most saturated. Now I'm just going to quickly reset all of this on top of having this three way color corrector as well. You can then click what individually so you can have shadows. And I like this because now you don't need to just rely on the, the circle wheel. You can as well just use sliders if you're more comfortable with that. As well, you can just put the numbers in for saturation, hue, luminance, and the blending and balance. So for example, if you know of a certain hue for color and saturation that you like to use a lot, you can just put the numbers in here. As well, there's this little square here and you can actually make your own custom colors, which is really handy if you want to have a certain kind of green always in your shadows or if you want to have a certain skin tone always in your mid-tones and highlights, you can literally just uh, right click on these and you can do set this swatch to current color and then with that current color, it'll go in there. So for example, if I put in this blue and I click that and then I go and choose set this swatch to current color. Now that blue will always be there ready for me when I want to click. So you can use the circles to control uh, your, your saturation or you can use the numbers here or sliders. Once again, I'm just going to press options and reset everything. Another thing to notice, uh, sometimes it can be hard to really fine tune and select colors. If you press command on your keyboard, that's going to allow you to precisely choose which hue you want to use. And then depending on what saturation you want to use, you can press shift and that way it's going to keep you on this line of hue, just going only more saturated. So those are really great keyboard shortcuts to know command and shift. I honestly don't know what those are on PC, but for all you PC guys, you guys know. So command and shift, command to change the hue on a direct plane and shift to go along the line and not sway to other. I really enjoyed that feature because sometimes it can be very hard with your mouse just to pinpoint the exact color that you want. So that's why you just use shift and you use command to rotate around that. Again, I'm going to press option, just reset everything as well. You have the option just to reset shadows alone here if you want. So you have the control for shadows, you have the control for midtones, and then you have the control for highlights. And then at the end here, we have global, which pretty much means that you can change the hue and color of everything. So if I go all blue, it's going to impact all the luminance values of this photo. So for example, if I go to green, it's going to change to all the green and red. So you can see that's how global color grading works. This is really handy because at the end of the color grading, if you want to just, you know, uh, increase the warmth. It's kind of like white balance almost for your photo. 
Now at the end, I just wanna show you what blending and balancing does. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna choose just blue for the shadows, I'm gonna choose green for the midtones, and I'm gonna choose red for the highlights. And basically what blending does is, it's kinda of like how much it's gonna blend the colors in between or feather. So the more you blend, it actually makes the midtones disappear. So if you want to use this color grading tab like in the previous Adobe Lightroom with split toning, just put blending to 100% and then it's gonna be pretty much like split toning. You're gonna to have the shadows and the highlights. But then if you put blending mode more towards zero, it's gonna make clear cut lines between the colors of shadows, midtones, and highlights, just so for you to understand. And then if you use the balance, balance basically means it's gonna lean towards one color, like your balancing act. So if you balance to 100%, it's gonna lean towards the highlights colors. And if you put it to minus 100, it's gonna lean towards the shadow colors. Okay, so that's kind of like the science behind this color grading control panel. That's me going through all the different things. Another extra helpful thing as well, instead of just turning off all of it at once, you can press the eye here, which will just, you know, turn off for a bit to see what it looks like, which is really great if you want to see how is it looking on the photo. All right, so how would I actually use this tab in a real life setting. I've chose a few photos that we are gonna edit together just to get a certain look for the photos. These photos are taken uh, when Peter and I were hanging out at the cottage a few weeks later. If you guys missed those vlogs, I will make sure to card both vlogs up here for you guys to check it out. We had a whole bunch of fun just shooting photos, shooting video. We did have some mishaps. Peter ended up crashing his drone into the tree, but hey, in the end we got it and we were able to retrieve the footage so everything was okay. But these portraits, I got four photos from this trip. There's a portrait that Peter took of me, uh, a portrait that I took of Peter, then we've got this portrait of me on the dock. So we're gonna start with first this portrait right here. Now, I would suggest to first do all the basic uh, adjustments you want to do and then at the end go to color grading because I noticed that if you do the color grade first and then you start impacting the exposure, the highlights, shadows of the photo, it's going to essentially impact as well the colors. So you want to first, you know, set the look that you want for your photos and then go down to the color grading. But for example, this photo, it looks pretty good off the bat. So I'm not gonna touch these in this situation. I'm gonna literally just go down to color grading and I'm gonna show you just how I would use it to give a specific look to the photo. So I often like having a little bit more of a teal for the shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find kind of the look I want. Okay, that's pretty good for the shadows. But now you can tell that the rest of the photo looks quite cold. So I'm gonna now add into the skin tones some warmth. And as well for the shadows, I think I might wanna actually bring down the luminance just to make it a little bit more moody and contrasty. As well for the highlights, I'm gonna put some warmth into the skin tones and I'm gonna as well bring down the highlights because I like to have a more creamy look to the photo rather than having really, really sharp um, sharp looking or strong looking highlights. So already looking at that, this is the original photo and now this is a more moody teal and orange kind of look. Uh, as well at the end you can play then with the luminance from the global. You know if I do want to add a little bit more contrast I can add a little bit more light to it. And again I go back to the shadows and I can bring down the luminance even more which is going to give a nice contrasty look. Again, I'm just gonna add a little bit more um, saturation in the mid-tones. So I'm gonna just go here, maybe put a little bit more orangey. So I'm gonna bring it over here and then hold shift to bring a little bit more right there. All right, look at that look. That's all created just with the color grading tab. And I think that looks pretty sick. I think that's actually pretty similar to the edit that I had on Instagram. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next photo. Um, again, I'm not gonna use the basics tab just because I wanna show you the power of the color grading tab. So I'm gonna go to color grading. Let's first figure out the contrast and looks of this. So I'm gonna bring down the luminance of the shadows. 
Oh, nope, that's mid-tones. So I'm gonna go to shadows. So I'm gonna bring back the bring down the luminance of the shadows as well. I'm gonna bring down the luminance of the mid-tones. And then I'm gonna bring the luminance up of the highlights just to bring some ex some contrast into the shot. And again, maybe for this shot, we want it to be a little bit more warm. Let's try, let's see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to balance this out. Let's put a little bit more teal and orange. And then as well. Okay. And then let's do some highlights here. I'm gonna bring the hot highlights to more bluish look. Just to kind of balance out the mid-tones, because I made the mid-tones a lot warmer, but I want the sky to be then a little bit bluer. I don't like the vignetting on this photo, so I'm gonna take some of the vignette away, and I'm gonna take these random distractions in the photo. I always love doing this when I'm editing photos. Whatever distractions in their photo, I just take it out. I don't mind. All right, so now we got that. We got this look. I'm gonna still play with the global just to see a little bit what kind of feel we can get for the photo. Yep. Ooh. That looks really cool. All right, so just playing with the color grading around alone. All right, so just playing with the color grading alone, I was able to get this kind of look. This was the before, and now this is the look that I've got now. A very powerful tool, and I would highly suggest for you to try it out and practice with it. All right, let's go to the last photo. So this is where, okay, the shot was shot very underexposed. So I'm gonna first bring back the exposure up. Again, I don't like having really strong highlights, so I'm gonna bring them down a little bit, but then I don't want the sky to be blue. I don't know what it is about me, but I don't like blue skies, so I'm just gonna desaturate the skies. As well, there's this blue rim on the right here of my shirt, so I'm gonna put down the saturation overall down of the whole photo. Okay, and again, color grading. We're gonna go to three-way color tool. We're gonna first choose shadows. I'm gonna choose more of a turquoise look. Go to mid-tones, put some orange warmth in there. Just gonna bring it down a little bit and then go as well to shadows and bring it down. A lot of times it's a really subtle look. You don't wanna go too crazy with these. Otherwise it's just too strong right away. So already there, we got more of a teal and orange look for this whole photo. I can still play with the global just a little bit. Since this is fall colors, I think it would be nice to get a little bit more warmth to the photo, just because it is fall colors. I'm just gonna play a little bit with the luminance there. All right, subtle changes, nice little greenish tint to the trees, a nice warm look to the photo. Literally, in a few minutes, you can get really good color grades right in Adobe Lightroom for your photos. So I would highly suggest just to play around with it. If it does feel daunting or overwhelming, don't worry, it's not that scary of a tool in actuality. So you just gotta jump into it and test it out and try it out and see how it works for you. If you guys enjoyed this Adobe Lightroom tutorial on how to use the color grading tab, I would highly suggest checking out this episode's sponsor and that's Skillshare. Skillshare has thousands of classes about pretty much everything and everything, but one thing that they have a lot of classes about is editing in Adobe Lightroom. For example, Phil Ebner has a great class called Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, the easy photo editing course, which I think is a great name because a lot of times we can make editing seem so much harder than it really is, but if we just take the time to learn what the different tools actually do, you actually get a lot more comfortable with the program and get better at editing. So I would highly suggest for you guys to check out Phil Ebener's course on how to use Adobe Lightroom better. And now for all of you guys, if you haven't yet checked out Skillshare for a limited time, the first thousand people can check out the link in my description and get free access to Skillshare Premium. Meaning you can sign up, check out the classes, 
If you find that you love it, you can stick with Skillshare, but if you find that you don't need their service, you can just cancel after the free, after the free Skillshare premium trial ends. So guys, go and check out Skillshare, really amazing service. I myself, I'm actually a teacher there, so check out my courses. So guys, check out Skillshare, really amazing resource. I myself am actually a teacher there as well. Check out my classes if you have a chance. But I hope you guys enjoyed this warm little afternoon studio session learning more about Adobe Lightroom. I know I had a lot more fun filming this video inside here where it's warm than outside where it's cold and rainy. All right guys, have a fantastic day.